I'm my name's Sharon and um, I'm one of the co-founders of the Women in Lighting project and um, we are really pleased to be starting some new interviews today and they are all with women that work in some form of entertainment lighting. So we have with us today um, Gigi Pedron from LA um, and I'm going to initially ask you to introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your job and what country you're based in and maybe how you got there. Cool. Um, well, I'm uh, Gigi. I'm a French citizen. Um, I moved to America about 10 years ago now, so I'm based out of Los Angeles. Um, I'm a lighting designer, lighting director mostly for uh, live concerts. Uh, but recently with COVID, I, I turned my attention to TV and film lighting. Okay. Do, and when was the sort of first moment that you got excited about or very passionate about light? When was your in, did your interest in light start? Uh, at the very first show I did, to be uh, very honest. I didn't know what I was uh, doing at all. I was an art student back in France and I was um, looking for my media. I cannot paint. I cannot draw really, so I was looking for my medium of choice to express myself, if you can say that. Um, and I made a bed in my hometown. They were wanting a lighting director, but they had no money. And I wanted to do something different, and I had no knowledge. So I followed them, and I jumped on the van, and uh, there they was, you know. I did the first show, and I instantly knew. Like this fader is doing this, this button is doing this, the music is doing this. It was instant, pretty much. So you sort of learned everything on the job as you were working. Yeah, you... yeah. The all the technical aspect, I mean the artistic aspect I like to think was always there. Uh, but um the yeah, the job in itself I learned on the road. I guess, I mean, certainly 10 years ago at least, there weren't um, courses or there wasn't much education? In... Well, I, I started doing lighting 25 years ago. Uh, okay. I didn't start lighting when I moved to America. I was already starting lighting in France and then I moved to America for different reasons. But um, uh, yeah, I started doing lighting, I was 19, so. Okay. I know that there are more courses now. I mean, there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a, uh, a university in the UK that's just specifically about entertainment. And so they have lighting courses on it. And actually, there's more than one. What am I saying? So, yeah, things have things have changed in that. Lucky. Sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't, don't know about America. Uh, well, you know, I'm not sure. But... Uh, I believe there is some course in university more for uh, theater lighting. Yeah. Um, I know Cal Art here, the big uh, art school in Los Angeles, has a theater division. Um, that's all I know about it. <laughs> but you think learning on the job is a, a good way to pick everything up and all the skills you need anyway? No, <laughs> not really. I mean, no. uh, yes, because you learn fast and you learn from different people every day because on tour, you know, you get to meet different people. And, work with different people and personalities every day. So you pick up things every day. Uh, I would have loved to learn uh, how electricity works before jumping uh, right in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I, I can relate to that massively. Mm -hmm. um, do you, how did you get into, I mean, you know, exactly what you're doing now? Do you kind of start off, um, like you said, you sort of you came into the role and you just sort of instinctively picked it up, and then you've sort of worked your way up to being the designer for for specific shows. I mean, what's your what's what's the sort of typical process for creating a design, or how your job works at the moment? Well, um, I usually get called by management company or bands of band members that've seen my previous work with different bands. And um, they want me to be part of their show. That's usually how it starts. Um, rarely I reached out to people to get the job because, you know, it's a creative job. So it's uh, really up to the people that want my services to call me and for specific purposes, I mean. So um, they, they yeah. might see a design you've done and um, you're the style of work you do and how you work with music. And then that, that appeals to them and then they approach you. Absolutely. Yeah, it's yeah. usually it usually work that way. Uh, networking, I won't I won't hide it. <laughs> you know, networking in our business is just an 
as we say in French, the nerve of the war. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you can translate that. Is the uh, the main thing is, you know, networking. Okay. And so when somebody comes to you and says, "Oh, you know, we'd love to work with you. We love the way you know the way you light light a show." How, what's the then process through that? How does how do the different steps go through from that approach to the actual end tour? Um, well, first I listen to the music. Mostly I work in music. Uh, so I listen to the music and uh, um, if I like it, I'm going to proceed. If I don't like it, then I'm going to refer someone else um, because it's a passion, it's passion work, you know, and if I'm not, if I don't feel it, then I'm, I don't want to do it because it's not going to be 100% um, yeah. good. You know, the yeah. result would be designing for designing. It's not what I do. Um, so first I listen to the music, <laughs> uh, if I like it and I want to be involved in a project, then comes the understanding of it. That means like every band has a message, right? Like mm -hmm. every notes means something to someone, especially the people that, uh, write it. So I'm trying to embrace that and understand that because I need to recreate this feeling or amplify this feeling by the lighting. Lighting and music is not, it's not two different things. It should be working in one direction. And it's the music direction. Where that music, you know, was the message behind it. Though, so then I, I start to think about what the music looks like. I kind of know instantly in my head, like, what it should look like when I listen to music, which is a plus in my, <laughs> in my field. Um, so that's the second process. I start to have ideas of, representation of the music in the lighting environment. Uh, and then um, the next step is budget. Budget is, again, it's essential. It's, you know, it's like every business, you have to work within a budget. And so that in the budget um, changed the design a lot. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you do you ever get specific briefs? I mean, I did read that um, that for the Jack White tour, you were. I don't know if you were asked to only use blue, or that was your concept. I'm not sure. Yeah, much um, that. you know, I welcome any inputs because, of course, like the people that call me want me to work for them for a reason. So I uh, I jump in their point of view. So Jack White just wanted blue lighting, very specific shade of blue. And uh, no moving light. I mean, moving light, but not phys physically moving. Yeah. So uh, I like to work within constraint. It it gets the creativity out like more than if I have like, you know, carte blanche um, on everything. Yeah. No, the pictures so, from that look yeah. stunning. Just the blue. <laughs> Thank really, you. Really stunning. Thank you. Do you? Yeah. This, um, this tour was very sorry. special. Do you, um, I mean, forgive me because I don't know, but is when you're on tour, are you taking a set of lighting fixtures with you where you go or are you adapting your design, your plot to each venue you go to or is it different on different tours? It's different on different tours. Um, again, it's a question of budget. Not every band has the same budget. You know, when you start to bring lighting, it involved having a bigger truck or two truck or three trucks or rigging, or <laughs> a rigging crew, a lighting crew, you know, not every production can afford that. So mm -hmm. I like to say I do it all. Um, when we, when I do bigger tour, we carry everything to worry. The only thing we have to worry is if we have enough room to put everything up in the air. Uh, <laughs> on smaller tours where I like, carry a small floor package of like, let's say 10 lighting fixture by myself, I have to adjust to whatever the theater or the venue has in the air to like complement. Mm -hmm. Um, mm. it's a fun part of the job. Yeah. yeah. Well, not so fun sometimes, depends. <laughs> yeah, no, I can appreciate if you have a certain design that fits a certain show and you get somewhere and they have, you know, very limited you know, mm -hmm. range and you still want to tell the same story. I, yeah, I can appreciate that. Yeah, um, it gets, you know, it gets very creative all of a sudden. It's very, it's very fun for me to adapt, you know, yeah. change it. I like to I change my show on the, on the regular basis of every show is different for me. Um, I do not work on time code. Uh, none of my sh shows are coded. It's all, can you it's all live. Can you explain, so, yeah, can you explain a little bit what that means? So no one's, you mean no one's queuing you, they're not, uh, you don't have, 
it's not entirely yeah. music. Yeah, on a, on the, the touring part of lighting, we have a, a protocol called time code. It's also an audio protocol that sends you a signal to the console. It's also you know to keep the measure. Um, you can program a show to that time code where the show is going to be the same every night, yeah. triggered by that that time code signal, um, which I don't do live. I've been doing that uh, lately on television and film because we usually do the same song for a music video, let's say, or a commercial for 12 hours straight. Mm -hmm. um, right. yeah. So in, in those instances, I, I tend to time code for consistency for cameras and exposure and stuff like that. But for live music, I always freestyle. I press the button myself. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that's really interesting, specifically to me, because obviously it's something I don't know much about. But, of course. Um, what else, What sort of, apart from being given a brief or something like that, only use blue, are there other things that inspire your ideas? Um, what, what would you cite as inspiration? Uh, I would cite mostly, <clears throat> you know, um, James Terrell, Mark Rothko, Dan Flavin, um, even like Frank Lloyd Wright, Le Corbusier, Bauhaus, uh, those are my aesthetic. Um, so it's mostly architecture and, and yeah. art. Um, no, yeah. yeah. I won't say I'm not um, um, inspired by other designer too, you know, by stuff I see um, on the street. So a reflection of a light and the water or whatever, you know. I'm also inspired by everything I see, but it's mostly in my case, uh, architects and, and artists, mm. mostly. Do you, have you got have you got a favorite Terrell piece that you've seen or experienced? <laughs> uh, I've seen many Terrell pieces because it's one of my goal touring around the world to go see all the Terrell pieces. Um, I got to say the Infinite Chamber was a uh, was a big one at the LA Museum. There was a momentary caisson that you would go and have a ten minute light show inside of a caisson. Uh, it was pretty awesome. Mm. And uh, a few years ago, I went to Tasmania um, at the Mona Theater, and they they do have like three or four James Terrell pieces up there, immersive oh. that are, are, you know, I'm a lost for word every time I see that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all waiting to get into his um, his masterpiece in the desert, aren't we? <laughs> mm, yes. When when it finally opens. <laughs> when, when it finally opens, opens yeah. Oh. So um, yeah, okay. lucky to be living in Los Angeles for that. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> get there. Um, what do you think is the biggest challenge you've sort of experienced in your career? What would you say that is? Hmm. Uh, I would say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or, or maybe you've encountered no challenges. <laughs> well, putting your private, your personal life and private life aside for years on end would be the most difficult challenge. Uh, I didn't know that I was joining the circus when I did, and that would redirect my life in a completely different way. Uh, my personal life, that is. Uh, so I think that was the biggest challenge uh, since COVID uh, happened and uh, my entire industry shut down completely. Um, I realized that there is a life to be had that's not in a bus on tour doing lighting. Uh, I can also like cook and have chicken in my backyard and enjoy my husband and go to national park, take strip and do do nothing or do something else mm -hmm. uh, that I didn't know I was capable of before uh, my industry shut down. So uh, it was a big um, oh, what do you how would you say that um, revelation. Yeah, a reminder yeah. that that I'm not just a lighting person. I'm a person that happens to be doing lighting. Um, so I would say um, when COVID hit, it sucked. Sorry, excuse my French. Uh, it's very, very bad. At the same time, it was uh, kind of good for me to find myself yeah. in a different ways. I think a lot of people would agree with you. Um, yeah, initially it was a massive shock and then there were so many positives about it. I mean, ourselves, Martin and I, were doing so much travelling 
um and I don't think we realize you know kind of yeah how exhausting and you know epic it it is to travel a lot and yeah it sucked to not travel but also Mm. there was a sort of chance to realize you know what it's like to just be have your feet on the ground yeah exactly that uh so I guess that was to answer your question yeah that was the biggest Mm. challenge in my in my career was giving up on on my personal self my my life my family and friends that I would uh not think to neglect uh they never think I would neglecting any part of that but I was actually so without realizing it do you think going forward your life will be a mixture do you think you'll try and get uh uh, yeah it's uh, it is already yeah it is already a mixture I uh decided not to tour just for the sake of touring uh and not because it's the only thing I knew <laughs> was touring. Um, yeah. And I learned how to live a little bit. So it, that's going to change for sure my, my way of working and living already. Has. Um, do, you, do you think, I mean, specifically because we're on a, a part of the Women in Lighting project, um, do you believe that women are given equal opportunity in your field? I mean, we know that lighting for music is, is quite a male dominated domain. So, um, what what can you give us your opinion on that? <laughs> Tough question. Um, <laughs> I don't think you should start this business with the gender bias in mind, because otherwise you're doomed. Um, I don't really pay attention to chauvinism myself. I think it's a lack of self confidence um, from men and from women. <laughs> you know, mm. uh, yeah. I think it's like. I don't know, and where feel my attention, but um, it is, you know, I think being a woman, uh, we've always been patronized that it's in any work, you know, like there is a reason when you go to certain level that there is no woman anymore in the business, and this is old patronism, like old kind of white male and down on things. It's it's true in politics, it's true everywhere, you know, medicine, uh, lighting. Um, since I started lighting 20 years ago, I saw a big change, you know, I was pretty much the only one I was very young. Uh, and, uh, now there is more and more women in this business, in this industry. And I found that fantastic. Um, mm. I guess it's just because it was not really, it's not really a glamorous job. I mean, for some people it is, but, uh, <laughs> I think it was all, it was categorized like a physical job, like a truck driver, you know, some, something that that male would think women cannot do. Uh, hopefully so society evolved um, a little bit every day. And it's, um, yeah. it's good to hear there's more, wi- there's more women, there's more, more women. Oh yeah, Perhaps. there's definitely more women than 20 years ago when I started. Um, That's the same as for architecture as well. Like it's the, yeah. the kind of playing field that's been transformed. Mm-hmm. Um, there's more. There's in more. Our, yeah, our time. Uh, um, I mean, but, yeah, I don't. I don't think like women are giving the same. Uh, I mean, nobody gives you opportunity; you take an opportunity. You know what I mean? Like, um, so again, what, like, what would, yeah. What would be your advice to you know, like a, a young woman who wants to do the job that you have, who wants to light, you know, music shows? Would you have advice for someone like that? I would say go for it. Like nobody's gonna hold the door for you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she opened yourself, but yeah. You know what I mean? It's just, uh, uh, I guess the main the main thing I would say is be a team player. Uh, nobody does what we do uh, by themselves, especially with live music. Uh, we are crew. Uh, um, the idea of crew is very important. Everybody has a piece uh, to play uh, in the puzzle to make the show happen on time. And, you know, we need to be a team player with every department and people that you live with and on, on the bus and local people you meet every day, you need to be, that would be my ad, main advice. You just go for it. And also keep in mind that it's a, it's a team effort. Yeah. You're one cog in a big sort of machine, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. exactly. You're yeah. One cog and, and you know, not everything depend on you, but everything depend on uh, all the crew is uh, going together. So yeah be a team player uh, you know you know first of all it's going to be more fun for you <laughs> and second of all you can't do everything by yourself yeah yeah 
No, that's a really good good point. Mm -hmm. um, I I saw online these really cool pictures of um, your customized consoles. Oh yeah. So <laughs> I, I wondered if you could tell us a little bit more about that. Is it? Do you do one per tour or mm -hmm. what? Yeah. So that tell us. I usually do one per tour because for me, I mean, as I said before, music is very important. It's predominant uh, for concert lighting. Uh, every music has a vibe, you know, every vibe has a color. So for mm -hmm. me, my console is really the color of the vibe of the tour, if I can say that. Um, I mean, con those consoles are super expensive and fantastic black console, but like I don't, I spend eight hours straight on it every day. I might as well make it mine, you know, make it cool, making it's my tool, do what I want. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 it's really cool. What happens to them afterwards? Have you got, you know, a, a I clean they, them. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 right. It's all e tape, electronic it, yeah. tape, so it doesn't uh, leave residues on the console. And you might as well also clean it because the dust that's in it, you know, when you peel it off, it cleans the console. So I return it brand new every time. So break my heart every time I make a bowl of e tape and return my console to its natural habitat. But um, yeah, I think it is an important part of the process. But it's really nice. <laughs> it's like kind of it, it only exists for that tour. It's only mm -hmm. part of the. That's no, I think it's, it's very cool. It's very yeah, cool. But it's, it's just the lighting. If you can go to like two queens of a stone age show, you won't see the same lighting. It's close. Yeah, but it won't be the same. Yeah, right. the band is different on stage every night. Even if they play the same song, everybody has feelings. Different <laughs> you know? energy and different yeah. energy, different yeah. vibe, really different crowd, you know, different so everything is different. I don't see why the lighting should stay the same, you know. I kinda of that one console. It's 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 I guess it's like how it's a little bit like we would like lighting for architecture to be much more responsive to humans. Because mm -hmm. it, you know, and, and it is moving that way in some ways. Yeah. But, um, you know, in general, it is a very static kind of experience, uh, light in buildings. But um, so I've got two last questions. Um, one I was going to ask you, which sort of links to when you've mentioned color a few times. Um, chrome, I can't even say it, chromesthesia? Chromesthesia, yeah. Okay. So I, <laughs> I, I saw in another interview, written interview you did that that you said that that's something that you experience, you have. Could you yeah. explain a little bit about that? <clears throat> well, first I didn't know it was a thing. I thought everybody was like that. You know, I hear a song, I know the color of it. That's pretty much it. <laughs> I didn't get it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, really know anything about it. I don't know anything about it. I just, um, I was browsing the internet, <laughs> like one would do. And uh, I saw that it was, uh, yeah, it's a, it's um, a part of uh, the synesthesia. Synesthesia can have, um, synesthesia that is, I don't know, I don't know how to explain that. Uh, sense are mixed, you know? Right. So your sight and your hearing are co yeah. combined. Yeah, or you can really? see numbers yeah. or yeah. hear numbers. Or <clears throat> well, for me, I can uh, I hear color. So that makes that does make you a very unique light and sound. You know, well, I don't know if I'm the only yeah. one. That's the thing. I don't even. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, uh, it's not a, a handicap or anything. It's just the way that you know. I hear music. I know what, what it should look like. Which is a big help. Yeah, it would sound like a big advantage. <laughs> like an advantage. But, um. Well, I guess if that career was so so evident for me, if I if on the first day I was like, okay, yeah, that's it, is because of chromesthesia. Actually, I was like, oh yeah, that now it's pleasing. That this this sound is pleasing. What mm. I see, you know, <laughs> it fits and it works. Doesn't gonna. It's not gonna give me anxiety. Yeah. No, it sounds like it's very positive. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, it, is. It, never, it was never an issue. Uh, it's, a, it's a plus for me. So I have one last question. Thank you for your time. No my problem. last question was um, just thought to ask you a bit about technology, because obviously since you started, um, I guess you've gone maybe from uh, basic park hands and a colored gel in the front to, mm -hmm. you know, these incredible color changing, moving uh, heads. 
So I, I mean, how, how do you feel about the sort of technology journey? Um, are you positive about it? Are you sad that you've lost, you know, like say the use of tungsten or what, what's your thoughts on that? Well, I can always go back to tungsten. It's not going to go anywhere uh, <laughs> if I want to. Um, what I like about that technology is the amount of output and lighting you can have with such a small power footprint with all those LEDs. Uh, you know, it's better for everybody. <laughs> drawing less power, drawing less heat. Um, I sure it changed a lot. Now you need to be more of an IT person than a lighting person to some extent because uh, all the networking, all the subnet and IP address and blah, 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 where it used to be turned at parking at full, you know. <laughs> now yeah. you have to, like, do all of the IT. Um, I've, I've, I do like technology, so um, it's not a – it's, it's all positive for me, mm. you know, that uh, vendors are – going more like eco-friendly and uh, and power consumption and thinking about the weight and thinking about the ip um, um it's it's great i think the only thing is that now you have instead of having like two new lights per year you have 20. <laughs> that's yeah. a lot of so that would have to pick from you know you get keep a tool with for everything yeah. yeah yeah keep up with what's being What's yeah. being put on the market? Yeah, yeah I, I do a lot of um, um, 3D rendering for pre prepping my tours and sending design to clients. And this field have evolved a lot too. Like it went from like little Lego looking people to like <laughs> <laughs> 3D yeah. render that looks real, literally, where you can walk in it with 3D go uh, goggles and what's not. So it's, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> I uh, thank you so much for just giving us a bit of a sort of snapshot into how you work and um, you know your sort of role within entertainment lighting. It's I could I've probably got hundreds of questions, but I'll oh just, yeah, I'll, keep, yeah, keep call me back when, no, I, when, <laughs> okay. when I when I think of something else, I'll call you back. But mm -hmm. uh, no, thank you so much. It's re it's very nice to meet you, and uh, we really appreciate your time. No problem. Call me anytime. <laughs>